that's a tremendous looking trophy. Welcome to the number one PlayStation podcast in the Oceania. My name's John Black. Join me as always, Ashley Hobley. Hey, John. Excited to be here talking about PlayStation, the ultimate platform to play video games. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Make that a new <laughs> new thing or something. Uh this week uh in the trophy cabinet, gold trophy, Chia impressions. I finally started that. I know I'm Ooh. like a week or a week and a half old to that, but anyway, I'm starting it now. And uh Platinum. <laughs> it's episode 299. So let's get straight into that because I think at some stage in the last week after <laughs> recording episode last week's episode and recording RK Couch or something, at some stage, <laughs> Ash was like what episode of Plot are we up to? I was like, oh, I think it's like episode 298 this week. So we still it's got like, like oh, two yeah, weeks. plenty of time to do <laughs> <laughs> No. Uh, so it's episode 299 at the moment. So that means episode 300 next week. Uh, what should I do? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I assume we'll do the usual. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's either do the usual and just do a live a Twitch one for fun, or I yolo it and be like, I I we record the podcast while I and as we're recording the podcast, I try and get as many of those shitty platinums at the same time. Yeah, that's a, that that sounds like a fun. Because <laughs> you know. all I gotta do is press X, right? So like maybe you know for the for the most of them. So for some sort of world record or something, yeah. Well, I thought a, a solid topic to discuss for an episode like that might be top 25 most important PlayStation games. You know, because okay, Couch, we do these crazy long episodes where we have these lists. Maybe we mm. don't need 25, maybe like 10. <laughs> so most important, like, to PlayStation, PlayStation as a brand? Oh, I guess. Like a, you know, like, Part of their you history, can interpret something. it anyway. No, you need like <laughs> <laughs> this isn't what do you want to watch. You gotta <laughs> fucking have correct. Yeah, you gotta know what you're, you're saying. So what what are you saying? I'm saying Zelda definitely needs to be on this list. Otherwise, you know, people will be very upset. <laughs> All right, uh, uh, let us know. I'll put a poll up on Twitter. Uh, should we do a normal episode? Should we do an uh, the top ten most important PlayStation? Ca- uh, what do you say? Characters, most Im- games, games, Definitely most important characters, games, <laughs> most important games uh, in PlayStation. Or should we do an episode where I try and get as many? Why not all three? Or all three at the same time? All right, that'll live. be up on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, live on on Twitch TV slash Explosion Network. Obviously, that's the. Uh, Anytime it's yeah, it's a a big episode. It's always it's always gonna be live. So yeah. Uh, um. All right. So, Chia started it, played a yeah. few hours now or whatever. Uh, it's it's a it's fun. It's just chill. I'm I'm enjoying it. So after all the trailers, uh, where it looked very pretty and um, you know, like exploring this islands or islands, I guess, uh, sort of thing. What is the actual game? It's basically a collectathon. Like it's it's fairly it's very chill. You go around. There is a story. So the story is you're um you're the daughter of some guy <laughs> um who gets kidnapped by like an evil sort of yeah. This you're like you wouldn't expect this. He gets like kidnapped at the start of the game by some I don't know like bad leader of this the what are they called the the new candonia the candonian islands or new can new candonia that's what the like the the background new caledonia new, new caledonia there you go i forgot now um yeah so he like kidnaps and then you, you discover with chia discover you've got this power which has obviously been at the forefront of all the <clears throat> the gameplay and stuff where she can uh what do you call it like mind like go into things so that can be an object or an animal and sort of control it for a short period of time and and now she's sort of on this mission to get back her her dad um i very easily quickly got distracted which is fine you know they get like after the first few chapters very linear 
go here, do this sort of thing, speak to this person, introduces the core elements of the game. And then they're like, hey, here's a map. And on the map, there's a bunch of collectibles. I'm like, yeah, cool. That sounds like fun. <laughs> it's just So I've just been wandering around, you know, collecting these things off. Uh, very just exploring the, the world. It's very chill. Like the, even the, the combat in quotation marks is you come across these camps of enemies they're the only and there's only like i've come across two like there's very minimal combat in this game it's mostly just exploration and whatever but the the enemies are like made out of paper they're created from the the bad guy he like created them somehow um he's he's made out of paper and you don't like the only thing you have is a slingshot and the slingshot doesn't hurt them so you have to pick up um like lanterns that are around where they are and throw it at them to burn them because they're, they're, they're paper enemies and that's how you, you kill them. So, um, But otherwise, they're just flying around. Uh, you get a Zelda-inspired, uh, what do you call it, like a like a glider thing, you know, um, at, from at the mm. very start of the game. So automatically you can start just gliding around doing whatever the hell you want. Um, but there's there's something fun about... So the animals, you, any animal you find in the world, you can dive into and interact with. So this means you can do fun things like find a crab on a beach, and then you can control that crab, and then you can go find another crab, and you can have a crab fight, and that's pretty fun. And then you can also jump into a bird, and then you can fly around, and you can poop on people's faces. So that's good. R2 to poop is what it, is what it says. <laughs> Great success. Uh, you can jump into uh, a shark. You can bite. R2's bite on the shark. You know, attack other sharks. Um, fishies. Deer. They just run super fast. I don't know. There's probably other stuff I haven't discovered yet, of course. But it's the whole thing where you'll be like, oh, man, I see this like a collectible on top of this mountain. I can... You can climb it. It's got the uh, this game has a stamina system. So there's a lot of influence in Zelda in this game, but or Breath of the Wild specifically. Uh, the game has like a stamina thing very similar to Breath of the Wild, where you like climb and it drops down, and you can unlock. Uh, you can find fruit that increases it by a second uh, the amount of stamina you have. But you can also be like, oh, cool, there's a bird there. Let me just jump into that bird, fly that sucker to the top of the mountain, and just skip this whole climb and shit. Um, so that's pretty, pretty cool. But there's no way, at least yet, to summon the animals that you may need at a specific time. So you just sort of go to get lucky. They may be around. I'm wondering, though, if as the game progresses, you'll unlock the ability to summon animals. Because at the moment, early in the game, um, you unlock the ability with Cheers ukulele to play um, a, a song and the song lets you change the time of day so you can change it to morning night dusk w- whatever you want for whatever reason but there's a bunch of empty spots in that like skill tree of ukulele songs or whatever you want to call it so it doesn't make me wonder I'm like oh maybe like late game ability sort of thing you can summon a particular animal to help you always be able to get around uh, there's no fast travel or there is but not from like if you're in the middle of the map and you want to fast travel, like say you've collected, at the moment I need to speak to this chief or whatever of some village to get his permission to get an item that I need for for the, the main story. And I've done that, and I but I can't just like fast travel back to that location. The only places you can fast travel is if you go to a dock and then you, then you can then tra- uh, fast travel from dock to dock. There's like 10 docks in the game. So, there's, and there's like one main island, two smaller islands, sort of thing. But you, yeah, you can't just like fast travel from the middle of the map to wherever you want to go. Um, but I'm enjoying it. I'll keep playing it. Uh, it's exactly what I thought it would be, which is just, it's just, uh, it's, it's mostly just about sitting back and getting the collectibles, which I can do. I haven't looked yeah. at the trophies yet, to be honest, because straight away I, I, I assume that all the trophies, I actually don't think I've had, oh no, I've had one trophy pop. And I, I'm assuming this is because there's going to be like two trophies for completing the game and shit. And then there's going to be 80% of trophies will be like, get all this, get all this, get all, get all, you know, it's, it's, there's all these different collectibles. That has to be what it is. So, um, are you still can, can try this out? It's on extra. So, yeah, I mean, uh, I've downloaded, I played like the first 
few minutes and just wasn't feeling it. Uh, so hopefully I'll dive back in. Um, yeah, I mean, it sounds interesting, you know. It, it's, it does have a bit of a weird setup where it's like you're retelling the myth of some other... Well, the retelling I, I mean, the story of Chair or whatever. I don't want to go person. into like... I don't know. I don't, as soon as the game starts and there's a there's a, a woman reading a story and they never show the woman's face, I'm like, you're just the older cheer. Yeah, yeah. That makes like, sense. I, I don't want to go into like, stere- like, <laughs> like storytelling stereotypes or whatever. This, is a giant, like, this game is just on. a giant humble bag. It's like, yeah. let me tell you how great I am. <laughs> well, because it like, starts with this kid like coming to the, to the village or whatever and then yeah, they sit down. It's like, oh, he's asked to be told this story again. But they never show the lady's face. So I'm assuming it's a bunch it's of orphans shit. as well as we. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. There's a bunch of because it's it's all inspired by like that culture and yeah. place, right? So I I think there's a lot of stuff that maybe will just go overhead or whatever else, or maybe it would require a bit more reading. But I did really appreciate that the game starts with this five page, like when you click new game. You don't get to skip it. It's like, hey, you're about to play a game. It's inspired by these islands. Blah 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 yeah. blah blah. Like, I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I just like set uh, the precedence. Like- yeah, set the precedence for for what it is and everything. You know, like the characters speak a combination of French and something else, like as a prominent language, yeah. a local language, local language. Yeah. So, and that's what they actually speak in the game instead of being like, eh, it's set there, but English because we want to. <laughs> you know, people don't like reading subtitles you know that sort of sort of thing so um yeah it's just it's 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 chill it's what i expected the base i'm enjoying let's get into the few new stories we got for this week so playstation plus monthly games for april have been revealed over at the playstation blog <laughs> the big game for this month is Meet Your Maker, which is a post-apocalyptic first-person building and racing game where every level is designed by players. Uh, I think it's a raiding game. Raiding. Oh, yeah, raiding game where every <laughs> player is just like, <laughs> every level is designed by players. That makes a lot more sense. So it's between roles as you master my devious outposts filled with traps and guards and gear for methodical, fast-paced combat raiding of a player's creations, gaining an edge by choosing the right loadout, melee, ranged, or defensive. Uh, so this is a new game. It's coming out. It's launching on uh, PS Plus at the same time. Uh, yep. Then your other games are Sackboy, A Big Adventure, which, of course, was a PlayStation 5 launch game, and then Tales of Iron, which is the, the hand-drawn RPG adventure that came out, I think, last year. Yep. Uh, the rat ga- It was one of many rat games. <laughs> <laughs> big year, year for so. rats last big, year. Yeah, a huge year for rats. So, um, what's your? How do you feel about these? Are you, you keen to play any of these? Or yeah, I mean, it, uh, Meet Your Maker sounds like something that a lot of people dive in and give it a shot. Uh, see whether it's what it is. What it obviously being a launch, launching with uh, PS Plus. I mean, that helps uh, gather interest. But uh, I've, you know, Sackboy is a really good game, so there's a great addition. But yeah, Tales of Iron's one that I've wanted to give a go for a while so it being here uh hopefully will be the push to actually dive in yeah fair uh yeah i mean meet your maker it's a new game so maybe i'll try that sackboy big adventure being on there just hurts my soul because i've i gave up trying to get that platinum because of that one that really problem. hard the big run the big run that yeah buddy was able to do because he's a better gamer than i am yeah uh check out and- the explosion network youtube channel we've got <laughs> That run. That run up, yeah. Now, I love how there's someone at uh, some stage commented, like, can you do it for me? <laughs> 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 Fucking, nah. Just tra- just give up no, and try it again good. like I did. Or, yeah, it will get good, whatever. Or, yeah, or quit, rage quit, make a video about it, and post that. Hey, I didn't make a video about it. Not that. <laughs> Not that. That was a different game, so. Ah, <laughs> uh, <Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Tales of Iron I wanted to play too but I don't highly doubt I'll get around to playing that that's just gonna sit in my never ending pile of shit I never got to how many VR games have you got on your list still oh like 20 20 million still still growing you know grows every day and here I am playing cheer that's fine um Last of Us part one came out on PC last week 
and it drowsing fucking... success, I believe, right? <laughs> uh, Presto writes the last was part one launched on PC last week, marking the series PC debut with a port of the PS5 remake. Sadly, despite the game still being a bona fide classic and remake improving on it in almost every way, the PC port developed between Naughty Dog and iGalaxy has drawn nothing but ire from players since it launched, little with a plethora of bugs, crashes, and major performance issues, even, even on beefier gaming rigs. Um, so <laughs> they posted, there's a bunch, they've got like a whole, uh, of course, uh, if you want to see these yourself, just look through the, there's, if you go to press start, I'll look in the, the show description. But there's a whole bunch of uh, bugs that uh, have been posted. The most, I, f- I feel like, memed one has been the just Joel's face, the one that's at the bottom of this. Um, now, to be fair, this is apparently, like, it was someone trying to play it on the Steam Deck, and apparently the Steam Deck just autos to, like, the lowest, 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 <laughs> like, possible Lowest setting. possible settings. But holy shit, does Joel... <laughs> <laughs> It's it's Last of Us if uh, it had launched on PS One. <laughs> yeah, literally. Uh, there's a video above that where Ellie's become a fucking a stretch play doh person for some reason. Um, there's another one here where people are just showing like uh, a bunch of freezers. There's videos online where characters uh, like this, the one at the very top where Ellie's just in the background doing a handstand and spinning for some reason. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, there's no one here where every character just starts sweating <laughs> like they've got like water just pouring off them for no reason at all uh so yeah the last of us coming out on pc has not been <laughs> uh, has not been sort of going well um <laughs> the uh to the point that naughty dog actually put out this statement, so over at PlayStation Lifestyle, they say Naughty Dog is taking PC port development in-house. Naughty Dog has announced it's committed to designing future games around PlayStation and PC. The studio has targeted console only in the past, which has made porting its titles to PC a complex process. Hopefully this will avoid some of the issues like the ones we've seen on the recent Blast Wars Part 1 release on Steam. As explained in the official blog post celebrating PC release of the Plus Wars Part 1, Naughty Dog's decision to fully support and create PC ports is a significant one. In the post, Vice President Christian Gerling described the difficulties of adapting input from a DualSense controller to a keyboard or mouse, saying, quote, For example, with Last of Us Part 1 of PS5 employs stick walking, with players traverse a space using the DualSense controller's thumbstick. As we all know, walking too fast in the Last of Us might alert the infected, which if you're trying to remain stealthy, you want to avoid. But while using the thumbstick, players' emotions might sometimes get the best of them, resulting in throttling the speed at which they walk. This feature is both tactile and emotional, adding to the suspense of any encounter. For the PC version, we had to consider many players' preference of using a keyboard and mouse as a viable control method. However, they don't necessarily behave the same way as a controller, so the design team explored and adapted this reversal method while still ensuring a world-class player experience with mouse and keyboard. We want PC players to experience the same level of tactile and suspenseful gameplay console players already enjoy. So the problem here is um, that people are trying to play with a mouse keyboard. Uh, the problem here is they're playing it on PC, am I right? Uh... <laughs> Last of Us has uh, been running fine on PlayStation for eight years now. So It's, it's true, yeah. The, uh, ever since the game released on PS3, I've seen nothing but comments, and I even knew someone who was like, I remember when they got, I haven't talked to this person in years, but when they, they, they came out PS3, they were like, I'm going to play it on PS3 because it'll come to PS, it'll come to PC eventually, and it'll be so much better there, and I'll be able to mod it. And like, oh, you know, the list of typical PC shit. And yep. I don't know where that person is now, but I hope they're fucking dying. <laughs> <laughs> What a this this release! Great advert for buying a PlayStation, if, if, if nothing else. You know. What if it was all? What if it's all part of the? It's a long ploy. You know? It's a long. Like oh, these people scheme. just just refund it on Steam. It'll be fine. We'll yeah, yeah zero loss. Uh, yeah. All these people refund it and then they'll go buy a PS Five. Yeah. More power for us. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it's yeah. genius. Yeah, genius long con. After talking about uh, PlayStation's great Metacritic rating, rating last last week, uh, they've already set themselves. To the oh yeah, themselves. they've, 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 they've <laughs> handicapped themselves to next year. Yeah, 
because uh, the Metacritic currently for the last was part one PC port. She ain't great. Is how I would put that. So yeah, it's a bit of a write off. It's a bit um, it's very funny, but also just disappointing because all these people who had waited for this day, I guess, to play this game, who have may- maybe never played it, this is their, this is their, they were this is what they get. Yeah, and yep, I've. <laughs> I'm sorry, but yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's fun to make it about you know, play people playing on PlayStation. But I mean, for people who did like want to play this, especially after the show, uh, and then diving into this version of the game and it being broken, uh, I mean, that's not a great. <laughs> no, You're like fuck it, I'm not. I'm not gonna play part two i'm just gonna wait till the show comes out in seven years yeah i was gonna say in like fucking a million years but yeah i know it's definitely uh disappointing it's funny <laughs> it's, disappointing. Yeah, it's yeah. funny for us who have enjoyed the game already yeah, it's funny for us it sucks to be them is what i would say yeah yeah <laughs> just fix uh, your drivers yeah update your update your drivers I shout outs. Um, I know I mentioned the other day. I'm still enjoying Greg Miller digging this hole. Just yeah, absolutely commitment, and I appreciate it. You need to admire someone who commits a bit so hard. Yeah, not backing down. And every day I see another tweet from someone replying to his one of his tweets. Obviously taking it super serious and getting upset and like trying to defend PC gaming, and then he'll just respond and be like, "Why don't you take your drivers or something?" And I'm like. <laughs> This person's like sitting there crying. <laughs> <laughs> Have you tried unplugging and plugging back in your mouse? Yeah. Maybe they'll fix it. That, maybe they'll fix it, yeah. Appreciate it. Uh, so, second final, so we've got two more news stories to go through. PSVR 2 sales off to a slow start. New report claims. It says Push Square. A new report by Takashi. Majusi Majusi of Bloomberg claims sales of Sony's PSVR2 headset are off to a slow start with around 270,000 units shipped to consumers since late February 2023 launch. The data comes from research outlet IDC with Francisco Geronimo. Really? Wow. What a great name. Of the company suggesting a price cut of the PS2, uh, sorry, PSVR2 will be needed to avoid a complete disaster. Sony's yet to share any official PSVR 2 sales data has never made its sales projections public knowledge. The comments and reports follow Sony having to officially deny claims made in two previous Majewski articles. The scribe suggested the platform holder was having trouble producing PS5 systems prior to its late 2022 launch, and they reported Sony had halved its PSVR 2 sales estimates for its first quarter it spends on the market. Sony publicly denied both these claims, even insisting that the, there was enthusiasm from PlayStation fans for the upcoming PSVR 2 launch. Uh, what do you reckon? True, false, lies? Is PSVR 2 dying already? Uh, no, I think this is pretty par for the course. I mean, it just depends on whether PlayStation is willing to take this early hit and, like, wait things out. Um, it is kind of launched in, like, a very difficult time with, you know, rising inflation and uh, living costs making it harder and harder to justify. The library is obviously not 100% there. Um, no kind of killer app to to get anybody well i guess horizon but that has been met with mixed results uh mixed uh opinions so there's no like must play psvr2 game uh at the moment so um yeah i think they i would have expected thought they would have expected that uh this would be that would have a bit of a slow launch you know it wasn't going to come out and do PS5 numbers. It sold out everywhere. You know? They've had pre-orders up for like, what, six months or something? So I'm sure they've had some sort of tracking as to what sort of numbers they've been doing. I, yeah, I I, feel, I, I think this is true, obviously, I, that it's not selling great, but I would fully think that Sony, this is what they expected. I just, I I would struggle to believe that they thought this thing was going to sell like hotcakes in what world where they a big company like this hires a bunch of analysts and, you know, sales projections and, you know, 
all this sort of stuff that gets to study and predict the the worst best scenarios if they really thought this thing was going to sell like hotcakes then i think they hired the worst possible people to do those jobs because um anyone with the two cents on the shoulders could have told them that this thing wasn't going to this is a this is a commitment to a, a couple years to get this thing to do well you know this the early adopters aren't the uh, we're always going to be small for this for this particular headset and hopefully they can start putting out games and approaching holiday season with a lot of good press and word of mouth I guess surrounding the headset by that point cuz the 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 plus they have going for them is everyone says the headset's great like I haven't seen anyone talk like there hasn't been any negative reviews at least as far as I've seen about the headset itself games sure library lack of like big games sure technology wise on headset everyone's very positive on so as long as they start adding games to get people excited i think that yeah between word of mouth and maybe some deals and stuff coming towards christmas time that's when hopefully they could see a, a an increase or something like that what do you yeah think? yeah, yeah I think I that's think best hopefully case by the end of year there'd be the numbers would be more impressive and like mm. Uh, I'm sure once you bring a lot more, like once they bring Beat Saber over across, that would be. <laughs> How can Beat Saber? How is it's it not ridiculous. day one? But uh, ridiculous. Yeah. No boost numbers and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we shall see. We shall see. All right. Uh, final thing: PlayStation this morning announced uh, a cool little thing. Not really for us, but a uh, cool feature nonetheless. Um, Sony has announced, right, Push Square, that the PlayStation Store will be updated with accessibility tags this week, allowing select PS5 games to detail the options they have before the title is bought. Vital for disabled gamers supported titles will let you press the triangle button on the marketplace to view a list of accessibility options broken down into a wide range of categories. Um, there's a video that shows you how this works. Uh, over 50 accessibility tags will be broken down into six categories, visual, audio, subtitle, and caption control gameplay and online communication. They're only viewable on a PS5 console, and the game's supporting accessibility tags uh, from this week range between... Uh, from this week, sorry, uh, Days Gone, Death Stranding, Director's Cut, Ghost of Tsushima, Director's Cut, God of War, God of War, Ragnarok, Grand Turismo 7, Marvel Spider-Man, Remastered, Marvel Spider-Man, Marvel Spider-Man, Marvel Spider-Man, Marvel Spider-Man, Marvel Spider-Man, and Returnal. Sony is working with a wide range of developers to bring support for accessibility tags to more games on the PlayStation Store, viewable in their very own game hubs. Together with the wide, uh, quote from the blog says, together with the wide array of accessibility settings within the PS5 console UI, accessibility tags will power you to personalize your PS5 gaming experience to your individual needs. Uh, Very cool. Uh, They also shout out to Project Leonardo, a the thing that's still coming from Sony, wherever that will come. Yep. The accessibility controller. Uh, yeah, cool cool to see. The only thing I would say that's disappointing in this whole announcement as a thing that's like, hey, this is out now. Well, th- these games are supported this week. Like, the thing. Uh, not on the web. I'm like, why is it on the web? It's weird, but whatever, I guess. It's, why is it only on the PlayStation Store? I'm fucking... Or, or on the app. You're the app. Why is it on the web? Why is it on the PlayStation app? Why is that's it why? Yeah. I think we know the reason why. <laughs> Because PlayStation's terrible at fucking designing no, anything. Because of PlayStation, PlayStation Store. Shit. That's just yeah. generally. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, well, we programmed it into PlayStation Store, so to get it to appear on the web, we'd need to run it through a different program, and to get it on the app, we'd have to, you know, basically redesign the whole mobile app. Fucking hell. That wouldn't surprise me, so. Uh, but would. yeah, this is just, yeah, not obviously not, not something I don't think either of us will be looking for, but... Not necessary for us on... No. Know. For, Briefly, for, but, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, cool, cool to see as well. Anytime I feel like Sony, uh, Xbox, Nintendo, any company doing more accessible stuff is just you know, worth uh, shouting out, I guess. Yep. All right, so th- that will do it for this week's episode. Again, episode 300 is next week. I'm going to put out that tweet shortly. We're going to 
lock in what we're doing and the next couple of days i guess i'll try <laughs> officially i'll just put up for like yeah. 48 hours um and then look for look on the uh the socials to see what exactly the plan is what day what night what sort of uh thing we'll be recording next week's episode and what the go will be with that of course if you miss it live as per usual or you can't attend because you've got plans totally fine everyone has lives it will still be up on the podcast feed and um youtube of course uh it'll be back to a, it'll be a video show which we don't Probably. really do anymore we'll be but they'll be back for a one time uh, uh back for another time so there you go so uh yeah you can find all of our twitters explosion.com slash twitter you can find our discord explosion.com slash discord uh all those places are great to talk to us and then if you want to support Platinum Explosion ahead of its 300th episode, which is a crazy amount of episodes of anything. Uh, you can do that by heading to explosionnetwork.com slash support and buy us a coffee over there for as little as a dollar. And until next week, remember, every trophy counts. <laughs> <laughs>